Hello and welcome everyone to this um, case study session for MSF on their mentoring program. I'm really, my name is Chandan Asanyal and I'm the individual accreditation lead for EMCC Global. And I'm really, really pleased to introduce to you today's speaker, Stephanie uh, Michelle Niles. So Stephanie, um, she is the she is the program manager for one of the operational centers of MSF, which is Medicine Sun Frontier, Doctors Without Borders. Um, I've been really fortunate to work with Stephanie on her accreditation journey, which is for, for getting her ISMCP. For those of you who may not be familiar with this part of the accreditation, it's an EMCC global accreditation on the International Standard for Mentoring and Coaching Program. So I've recently worked closely with Stephanie as the assessor on the program to support her with accreditation. And I'm really pleased to say that uh, the program achieved gold um, standard in uh, just, just to, in July, 2022. But I just want to set a bit of context for MSF because MSF was one of the first ISMCP achievers. Um, and they achieved gold um, in 2017. So we were really pleased um, to work with MSF and great that we are continue, continuing to work with MSF across different operational centers. You will hear from Stephanie shortly to give you a view understanding of the structure of MSF. They have several operational centers and we worked with the first operational center, which is the hub that at the headquarters in 2017, and they achieved gold. They renewed it after five years in April 2021 and really continued to hold on to the gold standard. And as I said, more recently, we have um, accredited one of the other centers, which is in the US, and they have also achieved gold more recently in July. Um, so I just want to say a little bit, first of all, about Stephanie. Um, so Stephanie is a mentor and coach herself. She manages the mentoring program at one of the operational centers, like I said. She has global experience, uh, 18 years of global ex experience of a combination of people and project management experience. And she's worked across the globe in many, or many countries, Switzerland, Siberia, Nepal, Fiji, and many others. Um, she joined MSF in 20, 20, 2008 as a finance and HR director in operations. And then in 2018, she kind of shifted her area of work and became one of the facilitators for management training and then moved on the following year to work on the mentoring and coaching program. So she has taken on the mentoring program in 2019 and then she's moved it to accreditation um, you know, this year. So that's an amazing journey for you, which she's going to share shortly with us. I also want to say that one of her colleagues, Catherine Anderson, was also meant to be here presenting today with Stephanie, but unfortunately she's not well. I just want to uh, refer to the fact that although Catherine is not here, it's an important um, point to uh, kind of take into consideration in terms of any, any mentoring or coaching program. She, in her role, is the Director of People Management at MSF. But I think one of the things that she did, uh, which I got a glimpse of um, being an assessor for ISMCP, is she was able to align the mentoring and coaching activities um, within MSF, MSF to wider strategies of the organization, both HR strategy, people management strategy, and more wider strategies in the organization. And the aim is for the MSF mentoring and coaching program to actually foster a new, more inclusive working environment and a people-centered learning culture. So this is one of the things I personally want to bring into the context is that you know it's got a strategic alignment to the coaching and mentoring program, which is so key in terms of the success and making sure an operational aspect of the program is aligned to the strategies of the organization. So um, I'm going to hand over to Stephanie now. To uh, She's got a set of slides to 
take you through the story of starting the program, developing the program, implementing it, and finally to through accreditation. Um, so I'll hand over to Stephanie, and we are here to support you as you as you talk through this whole journey. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Very happy to be with you today. Um, thank you for coming. I hope you know you all uh, enjoying this uh, this summit and. Uh, I'm glad to present you more about the uh, Médecins Sans Frontières mentoring program, one of them. The, the session today is to share with you a bit about the, the mentoring program from inception to accreditation. Um, how did we start it uh, all the way then to the uh, accreditation? And we'll share with you a bit also of this um, accreditation journey for the ISNCP uh, award. And, uh, um, the goal today is also to, you know, take this time to reflect together. Uh, we'll share with you some of the challenges that uh, that we encounter, and uh, um, it, the idea here is really to have a space where, um, you know, we can learn from each other experiences. Um, The, the, the overview of the session will be, um, first, um, I will introduce you to the, you know, our mentoring program, so you have an idea about um, what we're doing, how we're doing it to support um, our managers. Um, I'll share with you the evolution of the program. Then we'll take some time to reflect together um, on, on the challenge that we're facing. Uh, to do that, we will go into some uh, breakout rooms and then um, come back together uh, to share our reflection. And after that, um, I'll tell you more about our ISMCP uh, journey, accreditation journey, and uh, we'll end up with some uh, question, time for question. So MSF stands for Médecins Sans Frontières, uh, which means Doctors Without Borders. And it's an international uh, humanitarian organization. And what we do is that we bring medical humanitarian assistance to victims of conflict, natural disasters, epidemics, or healthcare exclusion. And we are working in, um, you know, all over the all over the world in uh, in more than 70 uh, countries. And our global workforce is almost 63,000 uh, people. Um, so that gives you an idea of. Uh, of the diversity of, uh, of the population we're covering here. So, as Shannon has said, we, we have a bit of a constellation of different mentoring programs in the organization, um, reflecting our structure, which is what we call Operational Center, OC, and I am serving Operational Center of Paris. So, we have uh, different uh, uh, mentoring programs, some are per Operational Center, and some are actually intersectional if we want, uh, such as the, the pool for the pool of mentors for communications uh, positions or board members, um, international fundraisers. So altogether we have more than 700 mentors and so far we've done more than 900 mentoring relationships. And what I will present to you today, I will just quit MSF for you know to be to keep it simple, but it's actually the mentoring program of the of the operational center of Paris. So, what are the rationale for for our mentoring program? Um, as Sean and I um, started to explain, it, it's really um, a nice alignment with one of our strategic objectives, which is um, to make sure that as an organization, we keep learning, that you know we keep sharing the knowledge uh, and learning from um, peer to peer, really encouraging the concept that learning is not just happening in the classroom, but also by exchanging with peers. Um, that reflective practice is a core ingredient of our learning and development, so reflecting on our experience as we go. So the idea of this um, uh, program is really to enable managers to develop their management and leadership skills to empower them to make their own professional development decisions as well. Um, this is a, a voluntary um, um, action, right? The decision to have a, a mentor. Um, as I was saying, it re embeds this peer-to-peer -peer collaboration and, and learning in our day-to-day -day work. It's a very practical um, support. 
And what we're trying to achieve also, what the mentoring program contributes to, is this transition to a new learning culture in the organization, relying on like this, you know, learning on the job, learning from peers, learning out of the outside the classroom, and really trying to integrate in our management practice the, the, the reflection, the reflective practice. So let's zoom in a little. So who are the mentees and the mentors in our program? Who participates? So we are offering mentoring um, in this program to managers who are working the operations in the field, uh, as we say. So all around the world. And mentors are selected for their experience in the field because they will mentor people from the same background. Um, and they can be current or former MSF staff um, who may you know, live and work anywhere around the world. And so we, as I was saying, yeah, we have some selection criteria uh, for mentors to, to become mentors. They are selected, they are prepared to become mentors with a, with a, a training. We're also looking for, you know, some uh, leadership management qualities. Mentees are the managers in, uh, in our operations all over the world. Um, they're working in very diverse cultural teams, often difficult context, and many uh, away from, you know, their home country and, and family, which this is to give you a bit of an idea of like the specific context. Um, and the selection criteria is, is just the role, the positions that the managers have. Um, and we need to limit it to a certain uh, number of positions um, just to be able to address all the, the, the requests for, for mentoring. Uh, hopefully, we will keep you know, um, growing the pool of mentors and then keep extending the, the reach um, of, of the program and um, include more and more positions in our offer. So our mentoring approach, <clears throat> the, the, we have some um, core principles that we follow. Uh, one is that, well, mentoring is voluntary, right? Uh, which means for mentees to ask for a mentor, this is absolutely voluntary. For mentors to join the pool of, of mentors, it is uh, voluntary. Um, they, they, they do this, um, you know, um, pro bono. MSF. Um, it's based on the peer-to-peer -peer support. It's absolutely confidential. It's really about creating this space for reflection that is not judgmental uh, and, and absolutely confidential. Um, and the mentor, mentor support mentees in a way that is not interfering in the operations. Uh, we have a clear distinctions of the role of mentors which is in addition to the role of, <clears throat> sorry, of the line manager or the technical reference uh, and not uh, another tool. And for that, we also respect that, um, you know, we, we, we don't um, share our opinions about the operational strategy that is uh, going on for, for the managers to follow. And here, a couple of quotes uh, that uh, illustrate um, this approach. One from the mentee. When you have a mentor, they are here to challenge you a little bit, or at least to question you on what you are doing in order for you to reflect. But at the end, it's you who are the one, you are the one who are taking the decision. And you can feel that there was also no judgment. So this is reflecting um, our, our approach here. And a, a quote from a mentor, the entire process makes me smile because at the end of every conversation, both mentor and mentee walk away feeling stronger and more confident of their skills and are better humans for having taken the time to explore together. So I think here it shows this, um, this spirit of, uh, of the mentoring support we, um, we have at MSF. Okay, so let's, um, let's have a little poll here. And um, could I, there's still questions here that I would like to ask you. Um, the first one, and you can, you know, give it your best guess. Uh, in how many countries do MSF mentees currently work? And you have a second question, which is how many different job roles 
are represented among MSF's current mentees. So what is the, the range of position we're currently covering with our pool of mentor? And the results? So to the first questions, um, we have um, 10, 27, 39, or 55? And the right answer is um, 39. Um, so that gives you an idea of yeah, the, 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 the diversity in the context that, uh, that our mentees are working in. And the second question was uh, how many uh, different positions are represented among uh, mentees? And the answer is more than 35. That's the number of uh, the different levels and positions we are covering now. So what, uh, what are the, the, the key elements of, uh, of this program? The first thing perhaps to, to specify so you can uh, picture it, it's like it's a 100% online virtual mentoring program. And this was uh, the case from the very beginning. So when we uh, launched it, it was before the pandemic and it was already online which was a big uh, advantage, right? When the pandemic hit, then we were already online um, and we could keep um, supporting the managers in the field. So the whole, all the, the, the cycle, if you want, that we usually see in a mentoring program, so the onboarding stage, the matching stage, the mentoring sessions, the post-mentoring debriefing, as well as the continuous professional development activities for mentors, are all conducted online. And another um, element also of this program that um, uh, can vary from a program to another, but in MSF, what we do is a continuous enrollment. So we keep con continuously onboarding, onboarding mentors and mentees. Uh, so remember, mentees are the managers who are being um, you know, hired or sent to the operation, and this is all year long, right, based on, on the needs uh, for our operations. So we don't have a system by, by cohort. It, it's really a, a rolling um, onboarding and the, the mentoring relationships are um, not starting at the same time, but they're also on a rolling basis. That makes sense. <laughs> so the evolution of our program. So we started it in uh, 2017. And first it was uh, like a, a pilot uh, model um, we offered mentors to only three uh, positions. We were at the top, the higher three positions of, uh, of managers in the, in the operations. Um, this was for like a year. And uh, we also had a condition at the beginning, which we lifted later, which is to focus only on the first time in the position. So managers who were taking a specific position for the first time could ask for a mentor. Um, remember, this is at the very beginning, so we're also building the pool of mentors. Um, and, um, we also launched the coaching skills workshop for experienced mentors. So mentors are um, trained through a mentoring uh, workshop, prepared to, to, to become mentors. And then after um, some experience, they can join another workshop, which is called the coaching skills where they get to deepen even more the practice of, of the coaching skills um, to use in their mentoring relationships. In 2018, we extended to more uh, positions at the coordination level, which is the, the, the higher um, part of, uh, of our function rate, um, and still uh, focusing on the first time in the position. Um, this is when we did a short evaluation of this uh, pilot phase, um, and we uh, did it using the ISMCP standard. So that was a way for us to start preparing the programs to put it on the track according to the ISMCP standards and see you know, how can we keep building the program in a way that is aligned with, uh, with the ISMCP uh, uh, standard of good practice. In 2019, we keep extending the offer to more uh, profiles and also as well to experienced managers. So we didn't, we lifted the, the condition of like being for the first time in the position. We keep improving the program, developing, offering more, um, like the continuous professional development activities for mentors. These include some webinars, uh, there's a mentoring cafe, so it's like once a month, 
uh, we all meet mentors who once we can can you know meet online and uh, we discuss the topic we share our experience as mentors um, and uh, in 2020 well we kept expanding to more uh, junior management profile and as you know that's also the year when uh, covid hit and kind of you know, disrupt our ways of, of doing so we had to adapt we adapted our offer uh, by um, tweaking a bit the the type of mentoring that we were providing uh, we call it short-term uh, mentoring so it could be on a, on a much um, shorter time a couple of months instead of ideally six months and um, we also had to then organize the, the training of mentors that was the only piece that was made in person um, before the COVID then uh, was also de to be delivered uh, virtually. Um, and last year, 2021, we kept extending the offer. We're now able to offer mentoring to all managers' uh, positions. We implemented the monitoring and evaluation toolkit. Uh, we launched a community of practice, uh, which is online, for mentors to come and exchange um, this time in a more written uh, format. And uh, we applied for the ICMCP um, accreditation, which we submitted actually at the beginning of this year, US, with the preparation time. And this year, um, we keep extending our pool of mentors to include more specialized roles. And yeah, the ICMCP accreditation was confirmed uh, in July. So here's a, a summary of, of the evolution of the program. So what you can see is, um, you know, there's some steps, uh, like in any uh, program development. Here is a picture of, you can see in red, the number of mentoring relationships uh, from 2016, when we really started the program up to, um, to now. Uh, so it's, it's a steady increase as we are also extending the offer with more and more um, mentoring requests coming in. And in blue, you'll see the number of, um, so the, the, sorry, maybe I should specify, um, the, the red line is this one, the one that is um, increasing steadily. And the blue line is this one. And as we can see, this is the number of mentors trained. Um, and there's kind of a, of a maximum number of mentor, mentors we manage to train every year uh, due to different uh, factors. Um, so that's also something to um, reflect on as the program keeps growing, is how can we um, keep addressing the needs. Um, and here you can see there's a little um, you know, decrease of the number of mentor trains, which you know, reflects the, the, when the pandemic hit, and we need to change our in-person mentoring workshop to prepare mentors to an online one. So, of course, there were less workshops that year uh, than other years. So, as you could see in this um, evolution, it was really about building. Uh, the first step is <clears throat> to start building the support from key stakeholders, right? Um, in our world, this means especially the operations department, you know, to, to make, um, ensure that the mentoring program is aligned with, with our uh, strategic objectives and how we can contribute to the development of, of managers so <clears throat> we can, um, you know, have more effective teams and better serve our patients. It's a progressive growth, right? And we go step by step to, to keep growing the pool of mentors so we can keep extending um, the offer of mentoring. And it's a continuous improvement, you know, of the tools we're using, the resources we, we offer, whether for mentees or mentors. Um, we saw some example of the continuous professional uh, development activities for mentors that we, we keep um, adding. It's about you know, sharing and maximizing the experience from other MSF mentoring programs. So Shandana mentioned uh, the, the very first program that was accredited um, in uh, 2017, I think you said Shandana, when well, they renewed um, also. And um, so we're capitalizing on, on their experience as well. 
uh, of course. This is really about sharing you know, the tools. We try something and then we, we share, and this is a, a, big, uh, a big plus. Um, it's about also implementing best practices, right? So for this, we have the MCC, uh, ISMCP standard of good practice. We also have uh, implemented the monitoring and the evaluation toolkit. So all this helps, um, you know, even like reinforcing the, the, the quality of the program. And of course, uh, we need in that still to have the flexibility to adapt uh, to changing circumstances and and needs such as what well, we talk about COVID and also the increase of demand, right? How do, how do we address all those? Sorry, I was going to just say before you move on, there's some questions around uh, that of the mentoring program that may, you may want to answer if that's okay. Yes, please. So the first question from James is that, what is the length of the mentoring program? So it, um, mirrors the duration of the assignment of the manager. Um, I would say on average it would be, well, we are an emergency medical organization, so on average it would be six, nine months uh, for the, the duration of the assignment uh, for the, what we call the, the mobile, international mobile staff. We also have actually 90% of our uh, staff is locally hired. And so for those, we do, a minimum of six months, and then we'll see on the basis of uh, according to the mentees' needs. If they want to keep okay, going. that's really helpful. So, really, James, if, as you can see, this is a humanitarian organization, and there are field operations. So, managers go into the field and they'll go into a project, and when they go into the project, they're allocated a mentor, and then the mentoring relationship lasts till the length of that operation. So, that's how it works and then how is the matching done is a question from Florentina. So the matching what we um, we do is um, I, I would receive the request of a manager in the field uh, who is interested in having a mentor. We would have um, about an hour induction call where I would um, explain what the, men the mentoring program is, how it works. Uh, we would assess the needs, uh, you know, ensure that mentoring is the, the, the support that would match uh, those needs to help address those needs. Um, get some information about you know, what is the ideal mentor in a way for, uh, for the manager. Uh, based on that, I would look at the pool of mentors um, and uh, who is available, who would uh, you know, be a potential good match based on many criteria. It could be, of course, language <laughs> is the first one we need to, uh, to consider. Um, we also, they can be different uh, kind of criteria in terms of experience and gender also can be, um, can be one, um, age, and of course the background. This is, uh, this is the, the, the main one. We, we match mentees and mentors from the same background because that's the value of the mentor, right? They, they speak the same language, they understand the specific challenges of that situation, position in the field, and so they, they really have someone where they can appear that they can learn from. Um, and so I would uh, first reach out to mentors, um, proposing them the request of the mentee. They can tell me yes, no. If they tell me yes, I go to the mentee. I, I suggest the mentee, the profile of mentors who said yes, and then they can tell me also yes, no. We really uh, make a point of making sure everyone is free to choose each other to, to enhance the chance that it's a good uh, match. And then they get to meet, uh, to discover each other, and if it works, then the match. Okay, thank you so much. There's one question about mentee training. So what do you offer for mentees? So for mentees, it's, um, we, we have different, um, I would say two parts. One is the induction call, uh, as I was describing. So I would have a, a conversation explaining the, the program. Um, it's also a nice way to, um, you know, give the manager a, a taste of what mentoring is, right? It's like where they can experience having this non-judgmental, uh, confidential space where they can really share about what they um, they want to develop and so on. And there's also an um, online uh, introduction course um, to mentoring. It's actually to mentoring and coaching because we propose, we offer both. And so this helps uh, managers to define 
okay, is it a mentor that I need or is it a coach? Uh, and then uh, that uh, help them um, learn more about both programs anyway, because as managers, they are also responsible to accompany the professional development of the team members. So this is also in the toolbox. Um, so that's how we, we do it. There's, there's another question, if I can say. James, did you want to come in and ask your question around, um, you know, managing turnovers of mentors? So what James is saying is that it would be interesting to hear about how you manage to turn over mentors, um, if any, and the enrollment of mentees when you opened it up for more junior roles you mentioned. So is there any turnover of mentors and what has been the experience of opening out the roles? Yeah, thank you, Chandan. I was not able to unmute myself, but you've asked okay. it. And I think it's based on what you say that they are very short term roles, uh, three to, to nine, six to nine months. So just on the turnover, because then you need to be constantly enrolling or it would be interesting just to hear about that turnover and how you deal with it. Um, so just to, James, I'm not sure if I understand the turnover, meaning the end of the relationship and a new relationship starting or the turnover among the pool of mentors? I, th I think bo both, because you said that if someone is deployed for six to nine months, then it's over. And I would also guess that like with any natural organization, there's people who come, people go. So how are you managing now that pool of mentors and mentees in terms of sustaining that? Okay. Because I think it's great all those years you've been able to manage that. I think there is some some secret ingredient that you, you're doing to just maintain it. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's clearly, uh, it's a very good question. And this is something, you know, the dynamic um, of the pool of mentor itself is, is, is still a learning process for us. The, the program is, is quite... Uh, young in that sense. So yes, the mentors that you know uh, came on board uh, a few years ago. Uh, what I start seeing now is is that um, a few of them would would decide uh, by themselves to leave the pool of mentors because they just well now it's been a while since they've been you know in operations and they, they don't feel that they can be uh, good mentors um, according to them. Um, so there's a natural. Um, turnover here in the pool of mentors. Otherwise, it's um, it's a pool of mentors. We, we're pretty flexible because, of course, mentors have their own, you know, some of them are also uh, still working in the operations, some are working in the headquarters, some left MSF, but they really um, want to stay in touch with the, with, the, with the field and share their experience and their knowledge. Um, and yeah, for now it's mostly this um, this group. I don't I don't have all the categories really of uh, of uh, mentors. It's a little a little turnover, not so much in terms of the pool of mentors, but they can be more or less available uh, depend in the time, and we respect that. You know, sometimes it can be they say, okay, I can't mentor, fine, uh, and then they say, okay, I can mentor again. So that's for the dynamic of the pool of mentors. For the mentor relationships. You know, once the, the, the mentee uh, decide, okay, it's, uh, you know, doesn't need the mentor anymore or because uh, they went home, uh, while the relationship is done and the mentor is free for, for another mentor relationship. Did I answer your question? Yes, 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 you did. Thanks, thanks for that, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. It was good to get those questions answered. Thank you, Sandana. And, uh, so one uh, key ingredient in all that, and I was kind of uh, you know, touching upon that um, briefly here, it's, it's really the commitment of the MS efforts. Um, they, we, we all share a strong commitment to MSF work and values, and mentors, you know, they want to pass on the experience. They want to support managers who are in situations that they've been uh, through before and, and having this opportunity to um, you know, keep the knowledge in the organization uh, being shared, um, despite all the movement in and out uh, that we have, and the high turnover that we see in the teams in the operations, right, because of our the system. So here's the reflection I wanted to share with you today. Um, you know, we see that in a mentoring program, there's a balance act. 
um, happening here. It's balancing the level of formality. Um, so we have some elements, right? We were talking about the onboarding, where we have the formal part, which is the online introduction course. We have the informal part, which is the induction call, uh, where we can have a more, uh, you know, it's human relationship. Uh, if we look at the commitment, the more formal parts are expressed in, you know, we have the online program with clear recommendations. We also uh, started to um, give the opportunity for experienced mentors to get the EIA uh, certification. And so that's, you know, some formal aspects. Um, on the other hand, we also have to consider that volunteer, mentors are volunteers. Um, so they also bring their uniqueness in their background, in their experience, and the flexibility to adapt to their mentees' needs, their expectations, their learning style, right? So it's balancing these, uh, you know, the, the formal uh, framework and tools. So we have, um, you know, we use some standard relationship tools to ensure some consistency um, and quality in the mentoring we, we offer. Um, we implement um, some surveys as part of the monitoring and evaluation uh, toolkit that we have, you know, baseline survey when the mentoring relationship starts and um, a post-mentoring survey at the end and so on. And the, the um, you know, the informal part of that is this casual peer-to-peer -peer relationship uh, which happens in this confidential, non-judgmental space. And this is very informal. Right? This is where trust is built, where the, 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 the sharing um, is, is, is happening. And so what uh, uh, we would like to do here is um, reflect on one of the challenge uh, in that area with you. Um, we'll do a 15 minute uh, breakout room so you can reflect uh, in smaller groups, and then come back together in the plenary and uh, and share our reflections. Um, so, if you could, you know, identify in each group uh, a couple of main ideas that you want to to bring back in the plenary, and uh, and the person who would be um, the the speaker, that would be great. Sure. The the reflection. What is the question here? So the, the, the <clears throat> challenge we, um, we would like to reflect on is how can mentoring programs fulfill the ISMCP standards, right? Having this um, framework to ensure consistency, quality in, in, the, in the mentoring program, while at the same time fostering informal, relatable connections. So from your experience, which aspect of mentoring relationship are formal and which are less formal? So think of some examples. And also, can, how can we balance using a formal framework like the ISMCP and tools, but still remain agile and responsive to the needs of the manager? It's basically thinking about the formal and informal, the structure of using something like MSF, but also still able to be adaptable and flexible. So this is what we have to think about in our breakout rooms. We have 15 minutes and in our breakout room to discuss these three questions. And when you come back, if you can identify three points across the three questions, then it would be great if one of you can feed back on behalf of your group. Welcome back. Hope you enjoy your virtual trip. <laughs> Everyone is back. Um, so, please share the, the reflection that you shared, um, and, and perhaps to, um, so we can all hear about the, the, the key uh, elements that are shared in each group. Uh, let's take some, some turn. Who, which group would, you, would like to start? Um, so we, we talked about um, there, you know, being a need around sort of mentoring programs to have some formal content perhaps around you know training the mentors having a system for, for mentoring the a process at some standards um but then the informal piece might be around how you individually meet the needs as a mentor 
of your mentees, um, you know, that, that you would flex and be agile and adapt um, a, according to those needs so that you know, there would be some informality, but within a formal construct. Um, so that was one of the concepts that we, we talked about. Thank you. And uh, did you see any uh, complementarity or any dissonance between these two concepts, depending on, on the process, a specific part of the mentoring relationship you were looking at? Yes, it's a complementary and they are not excluding. So uh, the standards give a good structure, but it's not, uh, uh, that doesn't give up barriers or uh, are, um, are affecting in a wrong way. How people said, no, we, we like to have something very light, agile, without rules. No, these standards uh, brings uh, um, from experience a lot of good rules, which um, uh, are known from by project manager, by, by program manager before the program will start. It's, um, uh, it's an added value for, for the quality of the program. So yes, I'm anyway, I'm in favor of, of the standards. And I, 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 I felt from, I have experience as program manager and I know how good they, they are. And uh, I, don't, uh, I don't believe uh, that are, uh, are against the flexibility of the program. No, it's a quality um, element for the program. Thank you. Thank you, Frantina. So did, did you experience any, perhaps, uh, difficulties or challenges in applying those standards in, in the reality of the mentoring uh, program? Yes, um, for example, ethical, the, the ethical side. Doesn't matter how much we, we speak about uh, confidentiality, uh, the, the, um, the training, in the, when mentors and mentees are in the same organization, they said, anyway, they make comments at the training side that it's difficult <laughs> to keep the confidentiality, which it's a fight for, for me, at least as a trainer and as a program manager to, to convince them how vital it is and how they cannot speak about what is inside. So mentors and mentees in, in, uh, in your program, they are in, um, in person together? Uh, yes, I, I, I had um, a program like this uh, in the same organization, but I was external program manager, not the internal. And uh, it was a banking, uh, a banking program that I, I just remember. And they were naturally sharing among mentees and mentors about their relationship. Is that what you experienced? Uh, no, I, I just want to say that uh, they they um, they had a lot of argues about the confidentiality that it's not possible to keep the confidentiality of the discussion. So, and I was was the only program where I I was surprised uh, about this uh, these discussions with uh, with uh, with some of them. But following the program one year, um, there were no issues about confidentiality at all at all which I was glad uh, with this. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. In the other group, what, uh, what yes, Anna, please. Can I just ask, um, uh, Florentina, was that a, a group setting mentoring or it was one-to-one -one mentoring? One-to-one, one-to-one. Yeah. So I think probably that's why you never had any issues because there is a more can say stronger bond, a stronger contact contract between the two. If you had in those settings in the same company, uh, a group session, group mentoring session, probably it would have been more challenging than one-to-one. -one. That, Correct. That's but, my observation, yeah. But another element who really help uh, for, for keeping the confidentiality is a training for, uh, uh, for mentees too, because are yeah. some, some programs where only mentors are trained, not the trainees. But if uh, if the trainees uh, understand why it's why the confidentiality is important, why they need to keep for themselves what the mentors are sharing, and that kind of and not speaking, for example, with with their line manager about the, um, about confidential elements, yeah? it's it's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you too. In the other group, who would like to share the key points of your discussions? Yes, hello. 
Yes, please go ahead, Konstantinos. Thank you. So um, I was in the group with uh, um, Anna, Cristiano, and uh, James. And um, I'll try and sum it up. Uh, I think that in the beginning, we, 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 get, we try to give examples of, of uh, aspects of what's formal and what's informal. And in talking about formality, we, uh, Cristiano talked about structure and uh, things uh, like the frequency of the program, the frequency of the, of, of, of the sessions, the duration of the program, um, uh, the number of sessions and, and this kind of thing, to which uh, I added um, that the, the, the initial screening for mentors has a very, has a certain for, formal aspect to it in the sense that um, we need people that have proven skill in a given area so that they are able to help so that has to do with structure in in in, in my perspective and uh anna talked about um uh documentation as being uh, an aspect of that formality also which is uh needed for, for feedback for assessing the program for 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 for, all, for training for all these kind of, of thing especially if you're certifying uh uh, um, EIA, uh, the mentors on, on, on EIA level, and uh, I, uh, we, we kind of also, I think, I felt we uh, relativized between the formal and the informal. Finally, I mentioned that I'm in the process of upgrading from practitioner to senior, and there is this criteria of um, uh, becoming more flexible about the kind of model you adopt in in in, in coaching and uh, eventually kind of uh, creating your own model and adapting it to the situation at hand. And so it's a criterion, but at the same time, it's a criterion that calls for flexibility and responsibility, to which I would like to say that in that sense, standards are not so much to me rules as, as quality standards, like thresholds to be, to be met and guidance, um, guidance arrows, how to navigate uh, situations. Um, yes, and oh, yes, and finally, there's this element of um, going back to skills and imparting skills. Um, if, and, and we have to we have to add the human element. And so, if you're supporting people that are uh, doing uh, humanitarian field work and they face difficult, sometimes dire situations, there you have to have a, I imagine, a, a very strong empathy factor. And being there to to listen, which is which is needed. We know it's needed. It's in the criterion. We we have uh, the rapport the rapport competencies, but it's at the same time human and so informal. And if I forgot anything, please uh, be my guest um, uh, to 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 to, um, to 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 a follow up. Eventually, adding just the element that for accreditation is important to have evidences, and, and so there, there is here always a tension between uh, having uh, the you know uh, the, the process documented and 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 um, uh, evidence of um, alignment with the standards and simultaneously. Uh, yeah, the need uh, to guarantee that um, the program fits the purpose, which is to support mentees. Uh, yes, that's a very uh, good point. And the, the, the reality um, in, um, in MSF is true. And that's where sometimes it's a bit for us of a challenge to, because we want to ensure you know, the, the quality of the mentoring that is delivered, but at the same time, how much can we ask uh, to managers who are overwhelmed with the daily operation work to still take the time to fill in a uh, evaluation survey or, or, you know, to use different tools that we are recommending them to use? How can we make sure we are, you know, solid enough to ensure that exactly we, we, we uh, do what we say we're doing according to the criteria and at the same time, are being empathetic enough, you know, agile enough, so to really accommodate to um, to the to the mentee's needs. Um, and and uh, yeah, the, the 
I think the, the an element also that, uh, that was uh, raised here, which is really interesting to me, um, is this uh, concept that yes, as ex as we go with experience mentors or coaches, right? We uh, we we develop our own model as well. Um, so uh, also ensuring that we keep supporting the mentors along their own development journey to make sure that they they don't drift uh, away from a mentor practice and you know and and have their uh, model in line also with what uh, what is expected from their role. Yeah. I also would like to add something which is, uh, at least in my opinion, is very important, which is this um, evidence, this documentation, this need to look at what we are doing. Yeah, it's necessary for accreditation purpose, but also is in itself need for the process itself you know we need we need to look at what we are doing so that we can ensure that it fits for purpose that uh, corresponds to what it is in itself so i i, I just want to emphasize that there is here also a a, a mindset about understanding um uh, the relevance of of um reflecting, documenting, helping uh, to, to look from a meta perspective. And so there is a tension and, and ultimately is this human side. So uh, what is this for? This is for supporting someone uh, and not losing sight of that. So Stephanie, a quick reminder that we have got um, 13 minutes left uh, and out of that, maybe five minutes for reflection towards the end. Okay, thank you, Shandan Hafor. Thank you very much for, for this conversation. Very, uh, very interesting. And I hope you got some uh, reflection and learning points for you too. For uh, uh, To share a bit more about our um, ICMC accreditation, uh, journey. What was it? Um, it? It was a learning journey, truly. Um, and uh, what will help ensure success? Uh, so be prepared for it. It's a lengthy process, which will take dedicated time and resources. It requires patience and attention to details, um, as you were saying. And there's a lot of evidence um, to, be, to be produced. And uh, it's really about being a, almost like an archivist, right? Um, documenting the history of the program. And it was really great. Uh, we worked with an advisor um, to help us prepare and get some you know, additional advice uh, to how we go about this process and how to present it in the best way. Uh, so if you have this opportunity, I would, I would highly recommend that. Okay, a quick uh, poll uh, here. The first question, is how many pages uh, was our application, do you think, excluding the analysis? And the second question is how many performance criteria are addressed in the six core standards of the ISMCP? Just to give you an idea of what, uh, what uh, <laughs> I see Frontino saying. Uh, <laughs> so to the, the first question, uh, we have between 30 and 50. Um, for the, for the answers given, and our application was 40 pages long, and that is excluding the appendices. <laughs> excluding the appendices. Um, and to the second question, how many performance criteria are they all together included in the six core um, standards of the ISMCP? All together, it is 69. Um, so that gives you an idea of like the. The, the work that is there to provide evidences for all the 69 uh, uh, criteria. Okay, thank you. So how can the benefits be maximized in the... Uh, um, of, of such a learning journey, well, what is to, you know, it is the opportunity to celebrate and recognize the program's achievements. Um, and everyone who contributed to it. Um, there are many different actors uh, involved in, uh, in creating and, and managing a program like this. 
um, of course, having an accreditation, right, it adds to the value of the program in the sense that, um, you know, the visibility, the credibility of the program, and uh, therefore we increase the stakeholders' confidence in the program. Having common, uh, it also, for us, it was very helpful to have a common set of standards with other MSF metric programs. Because then we, we, we kind of have the same levels in a way, uh, and we can now start merging our resources. Um, each program is created on their own, and now we're really in a phase where we can visualize and, and build synergies among our programs. Um, and um, of course, it, you know, going through this uh, exercise, it, it's really about looking for areas where we can improve. Okay, it's great to acknowledge what we're doing well. It's also about, okay, what else can we do better? Um, and this opens new opportunities and, uh, and directions for the program. And some of these examples, um, it's, for example, for in our case, uh, there was earlier um, the reflection on, uh, you know, the need to train mentors and mentees. Uh, so this is definitely something that we're looking to reinforce. Right? How can we reinforce our onboarding for for mentees? Um, another one is we also had a question about the you know the dynamic in the pool of mentors. How do we keep accompanying our mentors in their own development? And for those who've been uh, you know onboarded years ago, how can we uh, keep their knowledge about mentoring? Um, fresh, <laughs> this way, uh, in addition to the, to the opportunities to, um, um, you know, the mentoring cafe, the webinars, and so forth. So that's what uh, we keep working on. And uh, yeah, doing this um, accreditation journey was really um, a journey where we could reflect on what is there, how we're doing it, how do we can do it better. Um, it's a formal process, so there's this, you know, we're building evidences and to be able to look at what we're doing. Just to say that we are coming to the end of the sessions. We've got the last five minutes left. Um, so I just want to take this opportunity again at the end to thank all of you for joining the session, to participating and sharing your, your feedback from the breakout room. Uh, which has been really interesting in terms of your take on formal, informal structure and less structure and more being agile and adaptable. So that was really interesting. But before we finish, I, you know, I would like to invite Stephanie maybe to share like a 30 minute reflection on. So what, you know, in terms of your presentation and what you heard from the, the conversation and discussion, what are you taking away from this session? Just a quick reflection for 30 seconds from you. Um, so, so what I've learned during this uh, reflection session was, you know, the, the, the formal balancing informal and informal aspect of a mentoring program is, is very complex. Um, so the formal content, having strong, you know, standards to, to help um, have a, a quality and sustainable mentoring program is really key in complement to having all these informal aspects. And what we need to keep in mind uh, doing all that is um, really thinking of, okay, what are the, 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 the tools and standards that we need to follow so we can be able to look at what we are doing as mentors and keeping in mind that, uh, you know, we're here to support the mentees and be able to answer to the question, how do uh, we individually meet the needs of our mentees um, as mentors. And this uh, also um, signaled the importance of training both mentees and mentors for this mentoring journey, as well as uh, accompanying the mentors in their own continuous development um, as mentors along the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. A uh, huge thank you for you for all the trouble you've taken in terms of preparing for the session and working with us in presenting this really interesting case study. Uh, there's a lot of feedback. Um, Wendy says it's been a really interesting session. And so I just before we finish, I suppose, just a quick um, 
you know, any last questions or anything? We've got the last minute before we do the breakout room. So I'll talk about that in a minute. But any final comments, observation from any of you before we finish? Valentina? Yeah. I, I just would like to, to thank you to Stephanie for their uh, wonderful resources from YouTube because, uh, and I recommend their channel uh, because um, uh, the information they share uh, with, uh, with the world, it's very good. And I'm using, I'm recommending to, to, to mentors that I work with uh, uh, to, to look at your, so, so it's, they are valuable resources. Thank you for, uh, for sharing with, uh, with everybody this. Thank, well, thank you. you very much. I'm convey the, the words to the team in Oslo. And I'd like to echo that to say we use your links uh, to the videos on mentoring and coaching in our, in our training session at the university as well, because it's a really good example of practice. So, yeah, thank you for sharing those resources. They are really brilliant. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. It's going beyond them. That's fantastic. And thank you very yes. much for joining today and sharing your experience. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.